Hello everyone, welcome back. I trust you're enjoying a wonderful day so far. As we approach a potential government shutdown in the coming weeks, with various dates in consideration, there's a growing concern about the timely disbursement of social security payments. We'll be delving into that topic. Additionally, we'll expose a Republican presidential candidate for falsehoods surrounding social security and her proposed changes to the program. Presently, the Republican frontrunner, Donald Trump, has expressed a desire for an economic downturn within the next 12 months. We'll be discussing that development too. Before we delve into the main content of today's video, I'd appreciate it if you could quickly show your support by giving this video a like. It goes a long way in assisting with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. Now, turning to the primary focus of today's video, Donald Trump recently made a statement indicating his hope for an economic downturn within the next year, citing his reluctance to follow in the footsteps of Herbert Hoover. According to The Hill, the former president expressed this view in an interview with Lou Dobbs that aired on Monday. Trump, currently leading the GOP presidential primary race, explained that he wouldn't want a presidency resembling Hoover's, who took office during economic stability but presided over the onset of the Great Depression. While Trump criticized aspects of the current economy, he acknowledged some positive elements and claimed credit for their successes. He stated, We have an economy that's so fragile, and the only reason it's running right now is running off the fumes of what we did. It's just running off the fumes. Trump concluded, And when there's a crash, I hope it's going to be during this next 12 months because I don't want to be Herbert Hoover, the one president I just don't want to be Herbert Hoover. In recent discussions, President Biden has previously likened former President Trump to Herbert Hoover, specifically referring to him as Donald Herbert Hoover Trump, due to the shared distinction of being the only presidents to witness job losses in a four-year period with Hoover during the Great Depression and Trump during the COVID-19 pandemic. Biden acknowledged the complexities surrounding Trump's job record, highlighting that while job losses did occur during his presidency, it was predominantly a consequence of the widespread economic shutdowns imposed to combat the pandemic. It is noted that job gains were notable in the years 2017, 2018, and 2019, before the unprecedented challenges of 2020. Adding nuance to the discussion, Biden emphasized the need to consider the context of the pandemic when assessing job losses during Trump's tenure. While acknowledging the impact on overall job figures, Biden argued against solely attributing the losses to Trump's policies, especially given the extraordinary circumstances that characterized 2020. Furthermore, he questioned the merit of crediting the Biden administration for job additions, asserting that many of the newly created jobs were essentially recuperated positions from the losses incurred in 2020. Shifting the focus to pressing political matters, concerns have emerged regarding potential government shutdowns with critical deadlines on the horizon, namely January 19th and February 2nd. Despite promising developments in spending deal negotiations, Tensions within the Freedom Caucus have surfaced, raising the possibility of leadership changes if certain members align with Democrats. This scenario echoes the dynamics that led to the removal of Kevin McCarthy from his speakership role. Delving deeper into the intricacies of the spending deal, House Speaker Mike Johnson and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer have tentatively agreed on top-line numbers for fiscal year 2024, allocating $1.59 trillion with $886 billion earmarked for defense spending and $74 billion for non-defense spending. Additional agreements include a $69 billion side deal and adjustments catering to non-defense domestic spending. Amidst these political maneuvers, concerns have arisen about the potential implications of a government shutdown, particularly for Social Security beneficiaries who rely on timely monthly benefit checks. With approximately 67 million Americans depending on these payments, there is a heightened sensitivity to any disruptions in the delivery of these crucial funds. While assurances have been provided by Max Rickman, the president and CEO of the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare, that benefit checks will be delivered even if a final spending agreement is not reached. Certain Social Security-related activities, such as benefit applications and the issuance of Social Security cards, may experience delays during a government shutdown. These developments underscore the broader economic and political challenges at play, with ramifications extending into critical areas of public welfare and financial stability. 
Continuing on the topic of a potential government shutdown, it's reassuring to know that Social Security beneficiaries can expect on-time payments, even if lawmakers fail to finalize an agreement by the February 2nd deadline as mentioned by Max Richtman. However, certain services such as benefit verifications or replacement Medicare cards would be temporarily put on hold in the event of a government shutdown. This information holds true if a resolution is not reached by the specified deadline, maintaining a positive outlook for Social Security recipients despite the uncertainties surrounding federal job statuses during the interim period. Shifting gears to recent remarks by a Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley during an Iowa town hall interview, she outlined her perspective on Social Security reform. Haley advocates for keeping the retirement age the same for those nearing or at retirement, but suggests a potential adjustment for younger generations, including her own children and possible grandchildren, by raising the full retirement age. This proposal aims to ensure the solvency of Social Security for an extended period. Interestingly, Governor DeSantis questioned Haley's assertion that the retirement age is way, way too low, denying any recollection of her making such statements. The discussion unfolded as Haley defended her stance during a Bloomberg interview, where she emphasized the need for changes in retirement rules for younger individuals, particularly in their 20s, to align with life expectancy. It's worth noting a moment of irony as Haley expressed surprise at the idea of being fact-checked during the interview. The ensuing conversation sheds light on differing perspectives within the Republican Party regarding proposed Social Security reforms and sparks a candid exchange between political figures. Absolutely. In this instance, Haley is unequivocally exposed. Her confident denial, I never once said that, highlights a common challenge in politics. The skillful art of deception. The fact-checking revelation underscores how adept politicians can be at manipulating information. Without the scrutiny of fact-checking, many might have accepted her denial at face value due to its resolute delivery. When taking a firm stance on critical issues like Social Security, maintaining consistency and honesty is crucial. While some may agree with her viewpoint on raising the retirement age, the integrity of her statements becomes questionable when she appears to backtrack. It's essential for public figures to stand by their opinions without resorting to falsehoods, as credibility is at stake. Haley's recent scrutiny could erode trust, especially at a time when she's gaining momentum in polls, surpassing figures like DeSantis. While her chances against Trump may have been slim from the outset, this incident could significantly impact her presidential aspirations. The importance of transparency and honesty in political discourse cannot be overstated. That concludes today's video. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative. If you did, your support through a like would be greatly appreciated. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. Until the next video, take care.